Thanks for tuning in to this uh, rapid reaction of the college football rankings release. What we're going to do is, is take a look at uh, everybody's favorite, Mr. Paul Feinbaum. Tell me this. What's your biggest takeaway you. from those rankings? To me, Molly, it looks like uh, the Big Ten schools, especially Indiana, in Penn State are being valued by their one loss record as opposed to their schedule. The biggest beef is really Georgia. It is, it is a common theme now, but they played the toughest schedule in the country. Oh, and they, 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 they've lost to two teams that are ranked ahead of them. And, and I would maintain that Indiana with the same schedule would probably, probably have four or five losses. They will play Ohio State this week, and I think that's great. Can't wait to see the game. But I just think Georgia is being punished because – of the schedule in the league that they're in and what it what it really means is that they're in the playoffs but they'll have to start on the road probably oh. at one of those big tens which i it find means. to be ridiculous yeah i have i actually think that that uh analysis is ridiculous what is new uh you know paul didn't learn his lesson from last year when michigan uh, and uh washington played for the national championship. And as far as I can tell, neither team is from the SEC. Correct? Yeah, I'm pretty positive. So, yeah, I, I don't know what to – a matter of fact, right, right, even now, both teams are – I know it's this year – both are kind of in the Big Ten now. And the two teams that were beaten last year are now in the SEC. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, that was last year, but the fact is, is I guess that just doesn't matter now. It's another year, and last year, yeah, that was just a blip. SEC is still, you know, the be-all, end-all. So, yeah, Georgia, strength of schedule. Okay, we're in the year of the analytics. Boom. And uh, look, there's a, a, a time and a place for analytics, and I get it, but that's all this is. This is an analytic analysis. That's all he did. He just showed you numbers, okay? That's basically analytics. He's just showing you numbers, strength of schedule. There you go. Are you watching the games, Paul? Maybe you don't have time to watch the games anymore. Are you actually watching? I don't think he is. There's no way he's watching these games and with a straight face is trying to tell you that Georgia should be, I don't know. Did he come up with a ranking where he thinks uh, they should be? Maybe we'll find out. I happen to agree with you, Paul, 100%. You and I have been on the same page with this all year long. And, you know, we're going to listen to Mad Dog's analysis, and I'm going to say this, Mad Dog. I'm one of your favorite fans. I grew up with you up in uh, New Jersey. Um, listened to you for as long as I can remember when I was a kid. And uh, sports talk radio, uh, completely indebted forever for Mike and the Mad Dog, no question about it. But... There's certain things Mad Dog doesn't know, and 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 this is just it. Sorry, he, he's just uh, you know he's got his ups, he's got his downs, he's got his preferred sports. I'm sorry, but Mad Dog is uh, I I don't really think he's very good at football compared to other sports. Definitely baseball, uh, he's really good at baseball, but football. This is just come on. Let's hear what he has to say. Uh, they are overrating this Big Ten. How is Penn State this high? I mean, you got to be kidding me. Penn State this high? Penn State? They have done uh, – I had calls telling me this week on the radio while they beat Wisconsin. Look at this. Look at that. On the road. And Oregon struggled. What? They beat Wisconsin? This is what you're going to tell me now about Penn State trying to make a case for Penn State? Indiana, we're going to find out about them this week. So let's uh, – Are you going to – are you going to criticize Oregon? Because you're criticizing Penn State for beating Wisconsin. And by the way, they did it running away in the second half without their starting quarterback. Okay. Meanwhile, Oregon down to the wire in beating Wisconsin. But I don't, I'm not sure I hear anything about Oregon here. Penn State, we do. Oregon, no. Why? Because of Penn State's history? What does Penn State's history and I'm, I'm, I'm definitely a critic of James Franklin. I know Penn State fans all over that are critics of James Franklin. Okay? But that's then and this is now. This is – we've got to give them an opportunity to, to find out whether or not this is – now maybe Penn State loses to Minnesota on Saturday. And it's the same old Penn State. But at this point, 
they deserve the benefit of the doubt when we're talking about rankings. And right here, this is important. What we see and what I see from Penn State this year is football that is clearly better than I think I've ever seen under James Franklin. And I'm talking about the fact that they're more talented. They do not have a more talented roster personnel-wise. He's had a more talented one. I think it was, what, 2019? Doesn't matter. This is, without question, his best team. Leave Indiana alone. If they ever beat Ohio State, I can justify it. I'm with you right now. They're not nearly as good as these SEC teams. George is the second best team in the country. Okay, I don't care what anybody says. If Georgia's the second best team in the country. Georgia. We're going to get into my side. My side's coming. Back plays like that, they're the best team. But right now, they're the second best team in the country. And one of the, one, 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 two quickies. Miami should not be, what, the eighth? Ninth, what is Miami? The, the, how is Miami eighth? They should have lost to Cal. They almost lost to Duke, and they got beat at Georgia Shoulda Tech. How the hell? Can, how could they be eighth? Or that's and I'll tell you something else. Enough. It's I don't have a problem with all the conferences getting into the tournament, but why in the world should the ACC and the Big Twelve get a top four seed and get a bye? Why is that the case? Let them play. Well, let them play. That, that's, let, let's, that, I don't. I don't understand that. What if Georgia doesn't win their conference, they can't get a bye when they're the top four teams? That's ridiculous. I don't like that. Well, there's some things I don't like about it, but Miami 8th is too high. Well, let me ask y'all a question. What the hell did Miami do? Look awful in practice, and there was cameras rolling that showed it? How did, Ala, how did <laughs> Alabama jump them? By the way, Mad Dog, and we're going to get into this. We might even get into it right now, but we're going to get into this. Keep in mind what he just said about Miami barely beating this team or should have lost to this team. You know, because you beat Mercer? What are we talking about here? How did that happen? <laughs> and so I'm looking at it from that standpoint, and I'm saying, wait a minute, that's a huge question mark on that. Outside of that, Penn State, Indiana, you know, I, I'm just looking at them. Indiana's got to show. Listen, i not happy about that. So I, I think about those things as well. Georgia having a strength of schedule, I love the fact that Georgia has moved back into the mix because their strength of schedule is tops in the game. And when you consider the fact that they did that and they went and they handled their business against Tennessee, Oh, one question for you, and this is going to be fascinating. Next Saturday at 7.30 on our networks here. If Texas loses at College Station, they can't play an SEC championship game because they'd have two losses in the conference, and Texas A&M would be one of the top two teams. Could Texas be knocked out? Yes, they could. Uh, and, and Texas is the weak link in the SEC as far as the schedule because – and it's unfair on one level because they went to Michigan. Uh, they're the defending national champs. They were ranked very high. Michigan turned out to be a bad team. Oh, right. So they, they're not going to get credit for that. Uh, but the loss at A&M cool. would, would be very costly. And we, But you know, back to the Georgia argument for a minute, Stephen A. They're, they're not valuing Georgia. Before we get to back to the Georgia argument, so they just talked about strength of schedule being important. Now, for Texas, I guess it's unfair because, well, they just basically played the teams that were supposed to be better, and they're not. So let's not look at the schedule. Georgia, because of having two losses, but they're also not valuing the win. I mean, they have a win over the committee's number three team in the country on the road, and they also don't factor in – Oh, so Georgia's got a win over the committee's number three team, who, by the way, hasn't played anybody. Except Georgia? Wear and tear. I, I talked to Kirby Smart Friday night, and, and he, I understand he was, he was uh, politicking, but he was also telling the truth. He said, do you have any idea what it's like to play on the road at Texas, oh. at Alabama, and at Ole Miss? Those are all top ten teams. It takes a toll on your team, and that's as opposed to Penn State, essentially playing nobody except Ohio State and right. Indiana yeah. playing Charlotte and Florida International and Western Illinois. Right. It, it's a different, it's a different What's schedule. What's the love with Penn State? How did Penn State end up in there as a top five team? I have no idea. Uh, I mean, they, they have not – they played West Virginia. They're not big non-conference. These guys are taking absolutely nothing into effect 
nothing regarding do you watch the games? Do you watch these teams? Everything about this conversation, numbers, analytics, schedule, who did they play? What, what is, where's the rankings of those teams that were played? That is not how you should be ranking teams. You should be ranking teams by watching. You have one job, that is to watch football games. And when you watch football games, if you seriously believe, after watching Georgia play this season, that they're supposed to be some top four, top five ranked team, I don't know what you're doing, okay? Because those days are over. This is not yesterday's Georgia. This is last year's Georgia team would beat up this year's Georgia team, let alone the national championship Georgia teams, okay? They would win by 30 over this year's Georgia team. Okay, so get over it. This is a completely different, I'm sorry, I know it's just one year, but it's a completely different era. This is the transfer portal era, okay? And all of the depth is gone from Georgia. There, there's no more, uh, you know, these guys are gone or th this guy is injured and let's just put more, you know, five stars and four stars in there and the next wave is coming. That doesn't happen anymore. And it's beginning this year. But these guys, they, they're, they're, they're not getting that yet. So I'm going to do a quick thing here. We don't need to see his uh, mug, do we? While I do this, I don't think you guys want to see that. Okay, so let's do a quick thing here because didn't they talked a little bit about um, the, uh, the, 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 the fact that, early, that you've got these just SEC and the schedule and it's so tough. And it's just a wear and tear. Okay. You ready? Georgia schedule. The tough number whatever best schedule in college football. Okay. Week three, Georgia, Kentucky. Georgia wins 13-12. You know what Kentucky's record is? Four and six. You know what their SEC record is? One and six. You know what the total yards were in the game? Kentucky 284 to 262. Georgia was minus 22 in yards against Kentucky. Week three. You're, you're wearing tear already? You guys are already brutalized? Week three? Week four. After getting off to a pretty bad start. That's an understatement. They come back, take the lead, lose to Alabama, 41-34. Once again, they get outgained by 28 yards. And... Here's a trend that's starting. Mr. Carson Beck, three interceptions. Week five, Auburn. By the way, Auburn, four and six, one and five SEC. They beat him 31-13. Well, that's pretty convincing, right? Total yardage, 381 to 337 plus 44. Big deal. Plus 44, Auburn. Says here, Auburn's four and six, one to five in the SEC. Next up, week six, Mississippi State. You know what their record is? Two and eight, zero oh and six in the SEC. What was the score? 41 31. They beat them by 10. 10. Mississippi State. Where in terror already? Week six? Already? Week seven. Here comes the big win. You, you beat Texas and everybody's on Georgia. Of course, Georgia. They're awesome. This is the beginning. You'll see. You know what? The, you know what I get, did you watch the game? Go back and watch the game. And this is what's going on because I'm watching the games. And that's why I've had this conclusion for the past month or so that I am completely not bought into Georgia being Georgia. And this is a definite start of it. Because if you watch the game, you remember that not only did Beck – throw what three more interceptions but there were seven turnovers in the game and georgia had 285 yards of total offense to texas is 259 so you basically had under what 500 yards of total offense by both teams with seven turnovers boy that was a really well played game boy did they look like two of the best teams in the nation or what week eight Florida cocktail party. Yeah, I think they were buzzing because, oh, wait, 
Well, they won by 14. I mean, the point spread was about that, give or take. So, yeah, I guess that was a good win, right? I mean, look, look at the yardage, you know, pretty good to beat them up yardage wise. Beck, three more interceptions. And again, did you watch the game? Go inside the game. What do you see? You see a fourth quarter situation with five minutes left in the game to the Florida Gators. What's their record? I don't have it here, but I know it's not good. I think they are – actually, I think Florida's 5-5. Five and five. But the Gators are like just one step ahead of Kentucky, Auburn, and Mississippi State in the SEC. They're still they're like the, the, the average bottom, Florida. Five minutes to go in the game, 2020. What's most important? No Graham Mertz, no Lagway, no DJ Lagway. Third string freshman quarterback, tie game. And this is what, this is the struggle George is dealing with. This kid Warner, okay, right now, he's only had what, 50 career passes to his name. Most of them were in this game. He has a 42% completion percentage, no touchdowns, three interceptions. This is the quarterback that's in the game because it's their third stringer. And again, this is not Alabama. This is not Oregon. This is not Ohio State. This is Florida. Who may not even make a bowl this year. This is Florida, third string quarterback. And it's 20 to 20 with five minutes to go in the game. And Beck threw three more interceptions. This kid Warner's out there. And that's what Georgia needed in order to score two late touchdowns. I I believe one might have been a defense. And Georgia wins. It looks a little bit more comfortable than it truly was. Week nine, what happens? Ole Miss. Hey, you're finally playing a good team again. There are two really good teams on the schedule. And I'm sorry, I just don't believe in Texas either. I don't think Texas is really good. I think if Texas does lose to Texas A&M, I think Texas should be out of the playoff situation. There's nothing special about Texas. Has not done anything special so far this year. They have not beaten anybody special. Now maybe they will, but so far they haven't. So you have Ole Miss and Alabama. You, you didn't win either game, and Ole Miss, you lose twenty-eight to ten. And by the way, that score could have been forty-five to ten. If, if Georgia's defense didn't hold them to field goals instead of touchdowns, Ole Miss had a 152 yardage advantage on Georgia. 152. Isn't this the same uh, Georgia team from what? I don't know how long ago was it? M- might not have been that long uh, that they annihilated Ole Miss last year. 52 17. 52 to 17. And this year's team, minus 152 in yardage. And you're going to tell me that this Georgia team is, oh, yeah, it's just like last year. It's just Georgia. It's Georgia. Same old Georgia. And then finally, finally, Georgia has their best game of the season. But wait a second. How, did, how could they do that? How could they have their best game of the season in week 10? I thought it was a murderous schedule and it just wore you down. So how could your best game be – your last game. That's why it's an excuse. Nobody is saying that, because I've said this myself, that this isn't the new way of having to rank teams and look at teams. They're going to have two losses. Nobody's hardly anyone's going to go undefeated anymore. If they do, it's probably going to be because of benefits of schedule and things of that nature. So I'm okay with that. But, but again, this is not the problem. The problem is not the fact that Georgia has two losses. The problem is the way Georgia has looked. This is why I said the same. I said the same thing about Ohio State, Oregon. I know a lot of people believe Oregon and Ohio State they're they're the two best teams and they played that way. And then and there's a little bit of a drop off. And I don't believe that. I believe Ohio State, Oregon, Georgia, all the, all these teams. You put them in, you put like 15 of these teams, 20, 20 of these teams. And, and I'm also including Boise State, teams like that. Put them all, BYU, Colorado, put them all in a, in, 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 a, in, a, in a raffle bag and spit them out and 
I don't know what would happen. Anything can happen. Anything can happen on any given week. And it wouldn't be like a shock. And, and it's happened that fast because just, uh, just a short while ago, if you were Georgia or Alabama, you know, one of these dominant programs, Clemson, you could tell. You knew that they were just so far better than the rest. You knew you were dealing with a, with a, with a dynasty type of program. The dynasty is over at Georgia. They just don't know it yet. So that's going to wrap up my feeling on Georgia and whether or not uh, they're the second best team in the country. Uh, oh, please. Now, even Fe Feinbaum didn't say that. He allowed Mad Dog to come up with that nonsense. Um, not that I would think that Fe Feinbaum wouldn't be too far off. He might say like fourth or fifth in the country, but come on, man, watch the games. Look, the way that these rankings too, they're all going to take care of themselves. Okay, you just you guys talked about Indiana and Ohio State. Well, they'll take care of themselves. If Indiana beats Ohio State, what are you going to do? You're going to have something to say. What you should probably say is, well, that's because the Big Ten's terrible. It's it's down this year because Ohio State can't even beat Indiana. Now we don't expect that to happen, but it's it's possible. Indiana could beat Ohio State. That is possible. That is that that, that could happen. And, and the way that the Big Ten is, the way the rankings are, what, four of the top five of the Big Ten, we know that's not going to be the case. Because, again, one of those, two, one of those teams is going to lose. And then this is why you have – Mad Dog wants to know, I don't understand how Miami gets an automatic bid, how, how a conference gets an automatic bid. That's the reason. Because you can't have four teams from one conference, like the way – if the season ended today, you would have – Three teams from the Big Ten getting a buy. Come on. And it used to be. See, they're saying that now because it is the Big Ten. But if it was a year or two ago and this was going on, you would have all SEC teams up there. And then I guess they wouldn't have anything to say. But that would be the case. If you had SEC teams, Big Ten, Big Ten teams, whatever the case may be, that's the reason that you have buys. And it's also important because those teams are playing within the conference, like 80% of their games. So it is completely unfair. See, it's like, it's like Clemson a few years back when they were a dominant program. They were still a, 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 a little bit of a dynasty. They had a dynasty going on there. And they were playing in the ACC, which wasn't very strong. So it was real easy for them. But you were going to penalize, you know what I'm saying? So I'm not sure I understand. I mean, just because they were in the ACC or just because Miami is in the, in, in the ACC now. And, and, and let's go back to Miami barely beating Colorado or shouldn't have won this game or whatever Mad Dog was saying. I just went over this. How do you know George is beating Florida if Mertz was healthy or even Lagway was healthy? How do you know? Florida has the football in the fourth quarter in a tie game with a number three quarterback who can't play. How do you know? You don't know. They got outgained by Kentucky in a one point game. They could have lost that game. So you want to point and pick. And, don't, and again, I'm not talking about some top teams in the SEC. We're talking about the bottom teams in the SEC now that Georgia struggled with. Sorry, I don't care how good the SEC is. It ain't the NFL. Okay? So if you are struggling against the bottom teams in your conference and you have two losses on the season, don't cry to me that you're in the playoffs. And this, again, will all take care of itself. And I'm not talking about the Big Ten stuff. What I'm saying is we will wait and see. Okay? Let's remember this. We will wait and see. Let's see what Georgia does. Again, even though I think Georgia is more than capable of winning a couple of games in the playoffs because they're talented enough to do it. I just don't see it happening. And I'm willing to predict that it won't because I'm, I'm behind Ole Miss. I'm not SEC bashing. In the R Lads poll, I've got Ole Miss as the second best team in the country. I got him number two. Some of the guys that are in the – some of our pollsters don't even have, I believe, Ole Miss in their rankings. And I have them number two. Why? Not because they're in the SEC or not because they're in the Big Ten. You know what I'm saying? Wink.
but because of the fact that I watch the games, I don't care Ole Miss has two losses. I watch the games and I see the talent and I believe they are one of the best teams, if not the best team in college football. And I believe we're going to find that out in the playoffs and we'll see if they can survive here in the next couple of weeks, which I don't think they're going to have a problem doing. Maybe I'm wrong. Remember, th- th- these are interesting things that we're all going to be dealing with here. I mean, can can will Ole Miss uh, uh, lose to a team they're not supposed to, uh, you know, Florida or, or, or their rivals, Mississippi State? Uh, and once again, uh, Lane Kiffin can't get his very talented team to the playoffs. Uh, or uh, James Franklin uh, chokes it up again as they lose to Minnesota. Uh, with, because this is it. They got Maryland next week at home. So if, if you beat Minnesota, it's over. Penn State's going to the playoffs. So will they choke? Well, let's find out. Maybe they will. Okay, I'm not going to sit here and, and, and I'm not going to defend James Franklin and, and Lane Kiffin. But all I'm doing is, is I'm looking this year at the teams I am watching. And I do believe that this Penn State team is a worthy playoff contender. Okay, that can beat. And if Penn State played Georgia in the first round of the playoffs, I believe Penn State's going to beat Georgia. Call me silly. I don't know what you think. Let me know what you think. Let me know if you think I am off my rocker. Let me know if you agree with me that you think that Georgia, the days of Georgia's this dominating uh, uh, program, this uh, this juggernaut, if those days are over. And 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 you want to give all the excuses to, to Carson Beck and, and the reasons why he's not playing well. Hey, this is it. This is what you're going to face in the NFL. You can go to the NFL and you're not going to have all these blue chip play. Oh, they don't have, he doesn't have McConkie. He doesn't have Bowers. Hey, welcome to the NFL next year. These kids, uh, they, 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 they're experiencing it. Every kid experiences it. Every top first round, top five quarterback experiences the difference because you're a top five quarterback. You're not going to a football team. Nobody's got the, not, not many quarterbacks have the advantages of going from uh, college to the NFL and landing with Andy Reid. Not not many Patrick Mahomes out there. We know know his talent is off the charts, but the combination makes it just three-time Super Bowl championship-ish. Look, it's going to be a lot of fun. I love this. I've been I've been waiting for this for so long. I think we all have, or at least some of us have, the playoffs I'm talking about, the real playoffs I'm talking about. I've said this also ever since this was uh, uh, official that we were going to have playoffs, that this is going to be the biggest sporting event to come around in years. And as we get closer, and we're still like a month away, so as we get closer and closer every week, all you know, we're gonna have more upsets this week and more upsets the next week, and the rankings are gonna go now that Boise all of a sudden is, has made some noise and has entered into uh the, the top four because they outranked BYU and Colorado and so forth. And we still have to figure out what the heck's going on in the Big 12 to begin with. And 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 look, color by the way, the Big 12, one of the one of the mega conferences did not get that automatic. Okay. And if you don't think Miami is talented enough to beat Georgia. Once again, watch some football games, will you please? Because Miami's one of those teams that, yes, are they going to struggle to beat this, that, and the other thing? Yes. But put them up in a big game situation this year with the talent that they have, and it's going to be a fourth quarter down to the last series or two type of game. And right now, the way things are going this year, you want Beck or Ward? In a big time, in a big game situation, it's different. It's a different time. It's a different era. These guys, unfortunately, they just haven't figured it out yet. Check out the Arles Insider too. Keep an eye on that. We've got a link in the description. What is that? First off, you don't have to worry about ads. It's like its own little ad blocker. So if you're really frustrated when you're surfing around the Arles website, you got to deal with all those ads. You pay for the subscription, gone. One year subscription, one time payment, gone. Awesome. But that's just like a little bit of a perk. What's really awesome is, is that you can be real busy working and 
in, let's say you're in a fantasy league, it's real important for you to get this fantasy information, which is why you check out our lads. Awesome depth charts, best in the business. You, you love the fact that they're going to update the depth chart and let you know whether a player is playing because somebody's injured, transaction, whatever the case may be. This is important information you need. Maybe you need it because you need to place a bet on the game later that night. Maybe it's a Thursday night game or a Monday night game and you're at work. You can't get this information. You're not going to be able to get it till you get home and the windows is closed and you get home. And you got to deal with, you know, oh, is got dinner on the table? And you got to take the dog out. And you got to teach the kid. It's just madness. So you don't have a lot of time here. But what you get from our lads is you get the email alert that tells you when something has happened. So this way, you don't have to go searching for it yourself. All right. This is part of the our lads insider. It also has this AI thing that is so like 2024. I have no idea what the heck it is. Uh, I, you know, I'm old. What can I tell you? Yep, I'm old. But it's also really good because, uh, especially for the new age, the analytics age, so to speak, uh, the uh, younger generation that really likes to go on a lot of this uh, information, uh, again, whatever you want to call it, analytics, computer, whatever, the fact of the matter is, uh, it's a nice little format, software format, that lets you in on a lot of different scenarios that could take place. Same thing, gambling, lets you know where the advantages are, especially if player A or player B is not available. Gives you the percentages of wins and things of that nature. So that's all Arlet's Insider. It's involved into this entire package. I think it's like 24, 25 bucks for the year, one-time payment, done with, and again, what I love about it, no ads. So check it out, Arleds Insider. We'll have the link in the description, and we'll be back again talking college football. We'll do it again next week, rankings release. And anytime they want to go ahead and keep talking about the SEC in Georgia and how great the Bulldogs are, uh, we'll be here to rebut that. Uh, and uh, also check out all the great videos for scouting because I know we're not at that point yet to talk about the 2025 draft, but this is our lads. This is a scouting service, and I'm sure you're already seeing Dave Syverson and John Cooper are, are putting videos out for the 2025 draft, and I'm even going to be putting videos out, not just for the draft, but also just in college football in general because there's so many teams and so many players, and you just don't have time to check it all out for yourself. So uh, that's going to be my job, and it has been. I've done a lot of research over the past several weeks to kind of get ready for these videos, and I'm going to be putting them out soon to kind of – you know, uh, let you know what's out there personnel wise uh, in college football. Take a look at some of the top freshmen, top sophomores, you know, the, 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 the players that uh, could be out there uh, that we'll be talking about in the 2026 or 2027 draft. So uh, look out for those. And uh, again, want to thanks uh, everybody. Thank everybody for tuning into this video here on the Our Lads Football Network, the Our Lads Football YouTube channel. Subscribe, subscribe, like, Share. We'll see you next time.